What's up guys? So today I'm going to show you how we got this Rough Country 20 inch light bar installed on the TRD Pro on top of the CBI bumper and hooked into our Rough Country switch panel. This thing turned out awesome. I couldn't be happier with the results. The fitment is great and honestly it's a pretty easy and straightforward install. 7200 lumens, 100 watts. Might not be the, light, the brightest bar out there but I'm pretty happy with the results which you will see at the end of the video. Let's take a look at the install and then we'll give you a look at the light. All right, so here's what comes in the box. You get your 20 inch light bar, your set of instructions, your hardware with the correct size Allen key, two different sets of mounting brackets. We have the longer set or bigger set and the shorter set, which is what we're gonna be using. And then you get your wiring harness. We are not gonna be using this, but I'll give you a quick look at it just in case. This is very easy to set up in your truck, even if you're not familiar with these, super simple to do. So up top, you have your relay right here, okay? Um, you're just going to secure that usually underneath your hood somewhere close to your battery You can see that it has a tab right there You just take a self tapper pop it and you know secure it to your hood Then you can see coming off of the relay you have three different Wiring bundles or wiring harnesses coming off the bottom of it The first one Simply looks like this it has a black and a red with an inline fuse on the positive on the red um, This is going to go to your battery. So just red to positive black to negative Again, inline fuse right there. The fuse is in that holder. The second leg of wiring coming off the relay looks like this. Just has a Deutsch connector. You can see the back of the light bar here has um, the female connector. You're just gonna plug that in, simple as that. We're gonna be cutting this, again, I'm, I'm just kinda showing you guys what to do if you wanna use this, the harness that comes with this light. We're gonna be cutting this off. I'll walk you through what I'm actually gonna be doing. But that's the second leg of the three. So this is the third set of wiring coming down. It has a black, a blue, and a white wire on it with the connection right there. This is the switch that they send to you. It's just a simple push button on off switch. Nothing wrong with it. It lights up green for on, red for off. Um, you know, obviously will work and do its job, but we're gonna be going to our rough country switch panel. So all you're gonna do is take the connection from the switch, plug it into the wiring with the black, blue, and white, and that's your switch right there. Okay, so that's the wiring harness in a nutshell if you do choose to use the one that they send. Again, we are not going to be using any of this wiring. I'm actually going to cut that switch off though. I'm going to save that for a different project, um, but we're not going to use any of this wiring for this job or this install. Um, you know, obviously I'll walk you through and show you what we're going to do with ours. First thing I need to do is cut off the Deutsch connector from the light bar. Once you do that, you can see there's a positive and a negative or a black and a red inside the black outside covering. So we need to take our utility knife and slit down this outside sheeting, sheeting and um, get to the net positive and negative. So you can see once you split that with, utility, with your utility knife, you can then kind of spread this outer covering off and you can see our black and our red. We now have access to the positive and negative. Before we go any further, one thing I'm not gonna cover in this video is how to remove the front end and grill assembly. I just don't wanna keep repeating the same things in all of my videos. I feel like every time we do an install on the front, I just don't wanna to have to keep repeating those steps. So if you're not sure how to remove the front end, go back and check out my video on the winch install or the bumper. It's in the beginning of the videos. You won't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. Uh, but again, I just don't wanna, I wanna save time and not repeat the same steps in all of my videos. So as you can see, we already have the front end removed. I'm gonna show you how to get the light bar mounted and, uh, and then we'll move on to the wiring. All right, so before we put it onto the truck, we're just gonna take the two shorter screws that come with the kit with the light bar. You can see the longer ones over here, the two shorter ones here. So we're gonna take our shorter brackets and this is the configuration we're gonna mount them in. You can see we have the wiring harness coming off the, the right if you're looking at it. And then we're gonna put the brackets on like this. So we're gonna take a locking washer flat washer and then just screw the mounting brackets into the side and we're going to leave them loose for right now you can see they're snug kind of snug but i can still move the legs same thing on the other side so when you're done you can see again how the um the small brackets are positioned it has the loop kind of curving towards the back okay same thing on that side all right now to mount it to the cbi bumper you can see right here um, the two openings. 
because these openings are so big, these two bigger washers did not come with the kit with the light bar. I, I just happen to have these at the garage. You will need two bigger washers for obvious reasons. Um, if, you, if you only go with the bolts that came with it, they're not big enough to stop come, from coming right through the bumper. Okay, so we're gonna get this in position. Just get the wiring harness set up that way for right now. We're gonna take one of the longer um, bolts with a flat washer on there. We're gonna run it, or I'm sorry, take the, the bigger, this is why we need the bigger flat washer so it doesn't come straight up through. Okay, so longer bolt, flat washer, bigger flat washer, up through, through the leg on the, um, the mounting bracket. Then we're gonna go locking washer and nut. Now I do wish they sent nylon locking nuts with this. They did not. I may switch them out at some point in the future if I have any trouble with this loosening up but we'll just use what they sent us for now. And again, we're gonna snug it, but we're gonna leave it enough, you know, so we can move it around and get it exactly where we want it. So same thing on this side, bigger, bigger bolt, flat washer is already on there, bigger washer, up through the bumper, same thing. So once you have everything, you know, kind of snug, but still loose enough to, to move it around, what you can do is, obviously you can see, you can go front, or back. I'm going to have mine positioned all the way to the front. Um, and then on the CBI bumper, I actually had it perfectly centered. Um, you guys know me and my OCD. Um, I just obviously moved it, so I'll have to recenter it. But you can see you can go left or right a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and recenter it. And again, I have mine pulled all the way to the front. Position that however you want it. And then you can also angle it up or down. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and I'm going to have it basically angled straight ahead. Once you have it angled up or down how you want it, we can go ahead and tighten the two side locations. Okay, so as you can see, my OCD made me get it dead center. And my wife made fun of me the entire time. Thank God I can turn off the audio. So now that we have it dead centered side to side, we're just gonna go ahead and take the supplied Allen key underneath, 10 millimeter wrench, and tighten it down to secure it side to side. All right, so now that we have it secured to the bumper, I have the wiring ran, which I will give you a look at. That's almost impossible to do on camera, but as you guys know, if you follow my channel, I will give you a good look at how exactly we ran it. So we have the positive and negative right here that goes back to our battery in the hybrid, which is underneath the rear seat. That's also where our Rough Country switch panel circuit breaker is. And then of course we have the positive and negative from the light bar. I ended up trimming this a little bit. It looks like this wire coming off the light is only, it looks like it's only maybe 16 or 18 gauge. I'm gonna say probably 16. I'm gonna use 14 gauge. Weatherproof butt connectors, you guys know, we always use these no matter what. I've used them on the boat, on the truck. Same brand, I'll put links down below. These things have never let me down. This is gonna be exposed to the elements, so we're obviously gonna use it. We're also gonna use heat shrink tubing. So we're gonna slide a piece over the positive. We'll start there. Make sure you twist your wires good. Pop the red coming from the battery into one end, crimp it down, give it a nice little tug, make sure it's in there good. Now we're gonna take the red from the light into the other side. Again, make sure you twist it good. Crimp it down. Give it a little tug so both sides are nice and secure. We're gonna put some heat on that and shrink it down and then we'll slide the heat shrink tubing over that. Now we'll just go ahead and repeat the same steps for the negative. All right, so we have our connections made. I just wanna point something out real quick. Uh, you can see I changed it to black heat shrink tubing. I cut my connections off, I wasn't happy. So you can see the connections I had. I forgot my blue heat shrink tubing was only a two to one shrink ratio. So if you look close in there, hopefully you can see it there. It didn't shrink down as, as good as I wanted it to. So I just cut these connections off, used the same butt connectors. They were the correct size, um, but I just used a three to one heat shrink tubing. And I don't know if you can see, but it shrinks down 
super tight on that wire. Um, you know, there's no way any kind of weather or water is gonna get in that connection. So let me show you how we ran the wiring and we're gonna wrap this up. Okay, so you can see we have the wire coming off the light. There's our connections. We have the wire loom right there. And if you saw my winch install video, we basically ran the cable the same exact way. There's a channel where you can feed it. You can see my thick cables from the winch. It comes up through here. Let's go up the top and I'll show you. All right, so up top here, the, it's gonna come, you're not gonna be able to get a really good look right here, but it's basically following, there's a channel that comes up and it, it's gonna pop. Let me see if I can get you a look. You can see the thicker red cable down there. It's gonna basically come out underneath our, our um, this part of the, um, the engine bay. So it's gonna come along in here, pop right out by our intakes. And this is it right here, the smaller wire loom. Just wanna tuck all this back in when we're all done, but it just runs all along, again, tucked in in wire loom, straight back to that grommet that we've used to get into the engine bay. You can see it down in there with all the wiring going in there. So when you pop through that grommet, you can see right up there underneath the steering column. And then we just follow existing wiring. We, we took off the kick panel, the door sill, they just pop up. Same thing we do with all of our wiring, straight back. Here it is in the rear. And we just have it tucked right up through here. And we're gonna hook it into the Rough Country switch panel. I'll show you that right now. Okay, to get hooked up to our Rough Country switch panel, which if you're not familiar with these things or you wanna know how to install them, feel free to check out the video we have here on the channel. I do a walkthrough, a step-by-step -step on how to install a switch panel like this. So we're gonna wire it to this, this location right here. You can see there's a positive and a negative um, and there's a 20 amp, but you can actually ignore that. You can swap these fuses out. We're gonna wire it with a 10 amp fuse to these two screws right in here. And you can see positive, negative. Okay, the reason we're coming to these two screws, this location, this, po this set of positive and negative correlates to the switch on my panel up in the console, which I'll put a picture on your screen right now to show you what I mean. Um, that's why we're going to these two locations here. Very simple to do. The screws on top and the green areas there, you just loosen those up. And then that will allow you to, you can see how we have the wiring coming up through the slot to keep it nice and neat. So we're just gonna, we already have the, the screws loosened up. So we're just going to insert the positive into the red, like so. And then screw it down nice and tight. And when you're done, just give it a nice little tug, make sure it gripped in there, which is perfect. Then same thing for the negative. We're just going to slide it in the negative slot. And there you go. Give it a nice little tug, make sure it's gripped in there. And then the last thing, you can see that I have my battery reconnected here. Um, don't do this until you have the, the front of the truck put back together and your sensors plugged in. We already have that done. I already put the truck all back together. This, I just wanted to give you, show you this as a last step on how to connect to our panel here. Um, but again, don't reconnect your negative battery side or battery terminal until you put the truck back together and plug your sensors behind the grill back in so you don't throw any codes. Last thing we actually have to do that I almost forgot is when we did our CBI bumper install, the part of the bumper that we had to cut out, if you look down here, this wiring harness used to go into that part of the bumper, the part of the bumper that we cut out. But now it just kind of hangs free, which was totally fine. But now that we're gonna have a light bar in this area, we do have to bring it up out of the way and secure it. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm just gonna bring it up and kind of rest it on these tabs. And then we'll even kind of just zip tie it to existing wiring. Um, you know, there's plenty of stuff that you can, you can get it up out of the way and, and zip tie it too. And then there's one other thing I just wanna point out to you. This piece right here, if anybody knows what this is, please comment down below because I don't have a clue. It was actually secured right in here. I tried looking up the part number that's on the side. Can't find any information on this thing at all. I have no idea what that piece is. You guys know me, I know these trucks kind of inside and out. I do not know what that piece is. So it was just popped in right there. I'm just gonna pull it up out of the way and zip tie it up here. Like I said, if anybody knows what that is, please comment below. I don't have a clue. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. I am just going to kind of zip tie it up here. If we do get any codes or anything on the truck, obviously I'll let you guys know. But I I'm hoping one of you guys know what that is so you can inform me. 
I tried looking it up, can't find it anywhere. Okay, so you can see we have that wire secured up out of the way. And again, that piece right here, I just have it zip tied um, nice and secure there. It, the end of it is loose because again, I'm not sure what it is, but I have the wiring harness secured nice there. So we are now ready to put this back on the truck and finally test out this light bar. All right, guys, there she is lit up. We are gonna bring her outside and give you, you know, a look at, you know, from the driver's seat, let you know how bright it is, but working perfectly, connected to the rough country panel. The fitment is awesome. I know head on, I'm kind of blinding you, but just wanted to give you a quick look before we jump behind the wheel and let you see how bright it is from the driver's seat. Love how it turned out. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. We're going to give you a quick look at the light output. So we are on a country road in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to turn the lights off. It is pitch black, as you can see. So right now what you're looking at is the low beams with the fog lights on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn those off, and we're going to just turn on the light bar by itself, the light bar that we just installed, not the TRD bar. So lights are off, and here is the Rough Country 20-inch bar on its own. So you can see, not bad for a 20-inch bar. Um, for the price point, I mean, can't really complain. It's you know, It might not be the brightest bar out there, uh, but again, at the price point where it comes in at, it is definitely you know a pretty good pattern to it. And I like the fact that it's more centered, because as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off real quick. Um, these are the low beams again. I'm going to turn my high beams on. And so that's just my high beams. The TRD bar, if you watch, the TRD light bar in the grill kind of shoots off more to the sides. So you can see it right there. And now don't forget, we have the ditch lights as well on the front of the, uh, the truck shooting off into the woods. They are awesome. Check out my video, video on those. But now I'm going to go ahead. So again, the high beams and the TRD Pro light bar are on right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn the rough country bar on. And you can see it's more centered in the middle. So I think it's kind of a good mix between, you know, the TRD bar off to the sides, the rough country shoots out more in the middle. Um, so I'm pretty happy. Again, at the price point, you can't really complain. Uh, it's definitely a pretty good output, output on this thing. So I'll go ahead and turn my, my ditch, ditch lights on just to show you. That's pretty much what I see at nighttime on these back country roads. I mean, it lights up everything in front of me um, with the two light bars, the ditch lights. I mean, I could see anything and everything, you know, a half mile in front of me. So definitely happy with it let me know what you guys think if you have any questions comments or concerns as always put them down below we will see you guys on the next video take care thanks for watching